we approach the day of Thanksgiving, the readings and the time lead us to reflect on the meaning of gratefulness, the power of gratitude. The parable of the talents refers to the many things God has given us. A talent is something God has bestowed on us, freely given from him to us. The gospel says that he entrusted his possessions to the servants. He gave many good things freely given. And a great temptation is to do what the third servant did, is to bury, dig a hole and bury the talent. And this is very dangerous for spiritual life and for our own life. When we bury the talent, we become unaware of the gifts from God. But not only that, we become unaware of the one who gave the talent. And that's why in the whole scriptures you see exhortations to be grateful, to give thanks to God. One that I would like to share is the one that St. Paul says in the letter to the Thessalonians. He says, in all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. So Paul says, the number one thing you need to do before anything else, the will of God for you, is to give thanks, is to be grateful. And in all circumstances, in whatever circumstances, give thanks to God. Why is gratefulness so powerful? In the first place, gratefulness and gratitude makes you better and not bitter. If you think of these three servants, two of them, they become good and faithful. And the third one, the last one, the one who received one talent, he became wicked. So he became a worse person because of burying the talent. So when you are grateful, that makes you better. Because when you are grateful, you become aware of what is good in your life. And when you become aware of what is good in your life, you love more. Because love is the movement towards good. And when you become aware of what is good and you begin to love more, you become aware of God. Because God and good, there are only one O apart, at least in English. And evil and devil, only one D apart. So think about it. So goodness and gratitude makes you better. But ungratefulness, bearing the talent, makes you bitter. I don't know if you had this impression when you heard this gospel. When I first read it, I thought, poor guy, the last one. First, he got only one talent. Second, that talent was taken away and given to the one who had ten. Third, he was called wicked and lazy. And fourth, he was says, get out. There's no place for you here. So I thought, this is a mean God. I don't know if you thought about that in the gospel, but that was my first impression. How unfair God is with this servant. But Know this rule. Whenever you are questioning God, you are wrong. <laughs> that, that's what I, I lo- at least I think. When I, I'm questioning God, it's, I am not getting something. So I try to deepen in the parable. And one thinking of this helps. A talent is not just a penny. In the time of Jesus, a talent was a coin made out of gold and the weight was 75 pounds. Those who come from our country, 35 kilos. So half of my body made out of gold. It's a coin that was so big that it had a handle because it was so heavy. And it was the equivalent to 15 and maybe 30 years of work. So getting one talent for free meant he got like 50 years out of work. And the guy who got five talents, he retired without working ever. So this is 
not that he got the short stick. All were amazingly blessed. Two of them were even more blessed, but the one who got one talent, he was amazingly blessed, loved. He received many, many gifts from the master. He did not get the short stick, but he buried it. He became blind to the goodness of the master. He became blind to all the good things. And that's why he became bitter and ultimately wicked. So first, gratefulness is powerful because it helps you unbury all the talents. Did you ever feel in that way, I got the short stick? God maybe has forsaken me. He forgot about me. The issue is not to think in that way, but to unbury the one, two, five, ten talents God has given you. So first, gratefulness makes you better and good. Second, gratefulness builds your faith. When you are grateful, the roots of your soul grow deep. Your soul is like a tree. It has roots. And when the roots grow deeper into the ground, then when the storm or the winds come, the tree can be shaken, but it's rooted firmly. So the more you give thanks to God, the more you unbury the talents of your life, the more you begin to trust deeply in the goodness of God. You are building your faith for the moments of trials. Many times, it's not a matter if, it's a matter of when you will be tested, when you will be questioned, when you will be shaken in your faith. It will happen in your life. And those are the moments your faith needs to be strong. If you think of what Paul says, in all circumstances give thanks to God, because this is the will of God. He says, in all circumstances. He did not say for all circumstances. You cannot give thanks for evil things. You cannot give thanks for all that we have witnessed in the last month in Las Vegas, in California, and in Texas. You cannot give thanks to that. You cannot give thanks for having cancer. You cannot give thanks for breaking up with your boyfriend or your girlfriend or failing in a class. You cannot give thanks for those things. But you can give thanks, and you should give thanks in those things, in all circumstances. You are empowered and called to give thanks in all circumstances. In whatever circumstance of your life you are undergoing now, if you are grateful, it will build your faith. Thirdly, gratefulness is powerful because it unleashes the good in others. People need to be reaffirmed in the goodness that they have. They need to be appreciated. That's what God did with the two first servants. He told them, well done, my good and faithful servant. I have seen all you have done in your life, and it is good, and you are good. That's the job of God, to create good, to look at it, and to affirm it, and to make it grow. To appreciate the good, and to reject what is evil. If you ever bought a car or a house, if you are in college, maybe not yet, you are just trying to pay the loan for school, but whenever you buy a house or a car, you know what is the meaning of appreciation in a financial point of view. It means that it gains value. If you buy a car and you get out of the parking lot, it depreciates. It loses value just in half a mile because of getting out of the parking lot. If you buy a house, you can appreciate or you can depreciate. So to appreciate means to gain value. So as Christians, we are called to do what the master did to exercise the ministry of appreciation. Many times, 
the talents of people are buried, at least for them. They don't know what is good in them, and they need people like the master who exercise the ministry of appreciation and allows them to unbury those talents. I remember four years ago, uh, a friend of mine told me that he played the violin. And I said, you play the violin? That's great. Why don't you come and play at the choir, the 7 p.m. choir in St. Patrick? And he said, no, far like, I'm not so good. Well, don't worry, you will train. And then he started to play, and now he's still playing. He buried the talent out of fear. He needed the appreciation of a great, very important person like me <laughs> to unbury the talent. So when you exercise the ministry of appreciation, you unleash the goodness of others. To say and think thank you to someone is to affirm them in their existence, and that's what da God does. That's why gratefulness is so healthy, because you enter into the divine dynamic of the divine love. How powerful it can be to exercise the ministry of appreciation, to trust that God has entrusted his possessions, has put many talents in the people next to you. So how to exercise Thanksgiving in this week? Because Thanksgiving should not be a day, it should be an attitude. In the first place, five times a day or many times a day this week, give thanks to God. Be a minister, a servant of appreciation. The master said, well done, you have done well in small matters. So give thanks for the small things people do for you. Give thanks to your parents if you go and have a Thanksgiving meal. Give them thanks. Give thanks for the person who opened the doors when you enter any building, and so on and so forth. Think of this. I did the math. If all people who came to Mass this Sunday give thanks to others five times a day for one week, in one week, we will reach 57,000 people. So we will touch the whole of Corvallis. We will unleash the power of goodness. We will unbury the talents of many. We might change the day of many. Corvallis will be different. If Christians are exercising this ministry of appreciation, in the second place, what Paul says, put it into practice. This is very challenging. In all circumstances, give, give thanks. Thanksgiving can be an antidote to anger, frustration, irritation. When you are prone to sadness, frustration, irritation, impatience, shoot back Thanksgiving. Build like a wall of thanksgiving in your soul. And don't, don't let those spirits come in. I tell you, this is very challenging. Today I was thinking of this. Before the 7 a.m. Mass, half of my brain was still dead, and I was going to read something, and I spilled my coffee in the desk. And I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> in all circumstances, give thanks. We all have that roommate, that classmate, that when it comes, it irritates you. The way they speak, they never stop talking. And instead of being impatient, give thanks. Thank you, Jesus, for the talents of this person. They might be very, very, very buried, but they are there. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, because you love. And finally, Pray a rosary of gratitude. Last summer I was taking classes and I went to confession with this monk, a Franciscan of the Renewal Friar, Father Luke, and he gave me this penance. I don't tell you what I told him, but I will tell you what he told me. And it's this. He says, Father, pray a rosary for penance. 
I thought, a rosary? What did I do? I know it's not so bad. He says, no, a rosary of gratitude. So instead of Hail Marys, say things you want to give thanks for. So that's easy. So first decade, quickly. Second decade, quickly. Third decade, a little slower. Fourth decade, I started to think each of the things. Fifth decade, I started to go deeper, dig deeper. But in the middle of the decade, I started to feel this overflowing sense of the goodness and love of God. I started to feel how many blessings God had given me. I started to see the one, the two, the five, the ten talents. And I started to feel the love of the Master. So let us finish closing our eyes and giving thanks to God for His goodness to us. He is your Father. He has blessed you abundantly. Father, you are good and you give us many talents. Allow us to unbury them, see them, trust in your goodness, that the roots of our soul may grow deep in your heart, that we may unleash the talents and the good that is in others. Lord, make us grateful sons and daughters in you.